Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 382 of Screw the Commute podcast. We're talking about why podcasting today. I'm not going to give you the standard marketing benefits of podcasting. By now, they're all over the web, and I've covered them extensively in the following episodes. Episode 139 was podcasting behind the scenes. Episode 142 was podcasting in front of the scenes. All right. Episode 190 was podcasting tips and tricks. Episode 211 was how to be a great podcast guest. Episode 265 was how to book podcast guests. And episode 350 was just podcasting in general. So now in 382, I'm going to be giving you, uh, I'm going to concentrate on three very specific marketing techniques you can use if you have a podcast. And by the way, I'm expecting you to have high quality audio. None of this crap recording on your cell phone and putting it up on some free crappy hosting service. My thoughts on this are corroborated by my last guest this past Friday. Episode 381 was Bobby Ozinski. This guy is one of the top audio engineers in the world working with major, major groups that you've heard, uh, recording groups. Now, in an article he wrote for Forbes on predictions for 2021, he said he felt only 1% of podcasts would survive, primarily because people jump on the bandwagon thinking, ah, it's easy money, and they have poor quality and nothing to say, and no way to make money with it, so it's not sustainable. I disputed this with him a little, in that when I teach people to be their own sponsor, their chances of success skyrocket, and he did agree with that. That was episode 381. You want to listen to this guy. Boy, he's been around. Now, would you like to hear your own voice here on Screw the Commute? Well, if the show's helped you out at all in your business or given you ideas to help you start a business, we want to hear about it. Visit ScrewTheCommute.com, look for a little blue sidebar that says, Send a Voicemail. Click on it, talk into your phone or computer, and tell me how the show has helped you. And hey, also put your website on there so I can give you a big shout out on a future episode of Screw the Commute. Now, grab a copy of our automation ebook at ScrewTheCommute.com slash automate free. This is all the techniques I use to automate my business, handle thousands of customers and tens of thousands of email subscribers and prospects without pulling my hair out. So grab a copy of that at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And while you're over there, pick up a copy of, of our podcast app. And while you're over there, pick up a copy of our podcast app at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. And you can put us on your cell phone and tablet and take us with you on the road. All right. One of the best gifts you could ever give yourself or young people in your life is the gift of education. Now, you may have given them some Christmas gift or some depreciating asset, some cash, or maybe a car, or who knows what you gave them. But if you gave them a career, they would thank you forever. They won't come home and mooch off you. <laughs> Okay, because they'll have their own money. And you can do this with my school. I have the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country, probably the world. It's licensed to operate by CHEV, the State Council on Higher Education in Virginia. But you don't have to live in Virginia. It's distance learning. And what cracks me up is all these schools are coming on TV now. Oh, yeah, we got a business learning program now, you know, because <laughs> all of a sudden they can do this. <laughs> mine's mine's been running for 12 years as distance learning with massively high uh, scores from all the graduates and participants. So uh, <laughs> these schools are just throwing crap together 
to try to grab more money from you and then put you in debt and then you compete for jobs at Starbucks. Well, my school teaches these hardcore internet skills that every business on earth needs. So there's a massive demand for these skills and we have people making money before they even graduate. So check it out at imtcva.org. And also a little later, I'll tell you how you can get a scholarship to the school that you can either use yourself for extra training or gift to someone. So check that out at imtcva.org. And uh, if you're in my mentor program, you get this scholarship, and I'll tell you about that later. All right, let's get to the main event. I'm going to give you three podcast marketing techniques. Now, let me be clear. I'm not talking about directly marketing your podcast to get more listeners. Yes, that's really important. But what's more important is to turn your podcast into money, okay, and use it as a marketing vehicle to market your bigger products and services. And that's what I'm talking about today. All right, let's get to it. The first really cool technique is to get podcast booking companies working for you for free. Now, a podcast booking company is a company that podcast guests hire to find them podcasts that will interview them. In other words, if you want to be booked on podcast as a marketing device, and I think you should, you can pay these companies to get you booked on shows. The only problem is they aren't cheap. One guy told me he recently, I think he paid $14,000 to get booked on 30 shows. And I asked him if there was a guarantee on the size and quality of the show. And he said, no, there wasn't. Wow. That reminds me of the PR agencies who get you booked on radio shows, but there could be a 50,000-watt station in Iowa that had two listeners and one of them was a cow. <laughs> okay, so, so anyway, these companies exist and they are expensive. Now, I'm going to tell you right now how to get these companies working for you for free and also give you the exact wording I use when talking to them. So here's the first scenario. You get an email from one of the booking agents that says something like, hey, we love your show, which they probably never listened to even one episode. <laughs> and we have a guest that would be perfect for you, and then blah, 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 they tell you all their great cred cred credentials of the guest. Now, I have somewhat of a canned response to them that I just paste in the email and send it back. I don't spend lots of time on this. The only exception to this is if they were pitching a really big fish guest that I'd really like to have on. Then I immediately accept the booking. That doesn't happen that often because big fish have more requests than they know what to do with. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the text on how I respond. And, of course, it'll be in the show notes. This is episode, what is this, 382. Now, oh, by the way, anytime you want to go to a specific episode, you go to screwthecommute.com slash and then 382. And then I ran off a bunch of them at the beginning of this episode of other podcasts. If you're really into podcasts, you should listen to all of those other ones. All right, anyway, here's the text. I do put their name in. So if it was Sally that was contacting me, I say, Dear Sally, and then here's my text. Nice to hear from you. I'm currently only booking guests for reciprocal interviews. In other words, if it makes sense, they have me on their podcast and I have them on my podcast. Then I give them my, now this is a sidebar, then I give them my credentials and links to pages on screwthecommute.com to show them what a great guest I am. All right, back to the text. Uh, you're welcome to present guests that fit that criteria. Thanks, Tom Antio. Now, if you want to look at those pages that I have on my site, it's screwthecommute.com slash podcast hosts, plural, and screwthecommute.com slash recent appearances. Those are the pages I send them to to brag about myself is what a great guest I would be. Now, the next scenario is that you look up the podcast booking agencies on Google, just Google it, and proactively go after them. 
you tell them you have a podcast and what it's about and that you are interested in reciprocal interviews. And then, of course, you give your credentials and any pages on your site like I have on mine. And, you know, you got to show them that you'd be a good guest. But here's the thing. When someone pays them a lot of money to get them on podcasts, they are looking for every possible opportunity to book the person, their client, to keep them happy. If they know one of their clients also has a podcast, they present the deal to them about getting booked on your podcast if they will book you on their podcast. I've gotten lots of reciprocal bookings this way, and I don't look at it as ripping off the booking agency. I look at it like I'm partnering with them to get their clients booked. Look, good deal, right? All right, that's how you get booking agencies working for you for free because you have a podcast. All right, so the next technique is you can get in with people you probably couldn't reach in any other way. Now, it's no secret in the marketing and publicity world that getting on podcast as a guest is a great thing to do. Podcasts have a long life compared to radio interviews, and the recording schedule is usually more flexible because most of the time they are pre-recorded. Lots of people, including myself, love this, and I take just about every interview I can fit in as long as it makes sense and I can give value to a particular audience. Couple this with increasing listenership because new cars can play podcasts and there are hundreds of millions of in-home devices that can play podcasts. And this is a fantastic marketing opportunity. <laughs> but guess what? I'm not the only one with the, the thought of this idea. Some very big name people will be glad to be on your podcast, especially if you catch them when they are promoting a new book or course or a project. These are people who you normally couldn't get to in any other fashion. You may have to deal with their PR agency, which again is obligated to get their client on the air in as many ways as they can. Your willingness to record at odd times will increase your chances of landing bigger and more powerful guests. If you do a great job interviewing them, you have just started a small relationship with them. Also, if you are your own sponsor, which I always am and I always teach you to be, they will hear about you and your stuff during the interview when you're taking your sponsor breaks. Now, many people that have known me for years didn't know that I had a school or a unique mentor program until I interviewed them on this podcast. I also make it clear to them they can make big commissions from referring me. This not only gives you a chance they may do business with you personally, they may also refer you, which could mean way more money than just selling something to them. So, approach people you'd like to work with. Now, will all of them work out? Heck no. But some will, and that can change the course of your career. Okay, the next podcast technique I'm going to tell you about got me invited to the White House. All right, before I get to that, though, I want to tell you about my mentor program. It's at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. It's the longest, most unique, most successful mentor program in the field of internet marketing ever. It's been running over 22 years now. I guess it's moving towards 23 years now. And 1,700 students, no lawsuits, nobody chasing me around, nobody bad-mouthing me. <laughs> and, and how can I claim that it's the unique and the best? And Well, it's easy to claim it's the longest running, but the unique and the best. Well, it's unique for lots of different things. One is that everything is one-on-one, -on -one, so you're not lumped in with people more advanced than you or beginners. We talk to you at your level, so you make the fastest progress. When I say we, you have access to my entire staff on an unlimited consultation basis, one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll even take over your screen and show you where to click and just rapidly increase your learning curve or decrease your learning curve. And 
Other things that are unique, you have an immersion weekend at the Great Internet Marketing Retreat Center in Virginia Beach. Of course, when the pandemic is, is over, you live in the house with me and watch all this stuff happen and learn. And it's, uh, it's only a small group there. It's only maybe five people is about the average. And we also have a TV studio next door where we shoot all your marketing videos for you and edit them, put graphics on them, and send them to you when you get home. Nobody does this kind of stuff for you, I'll tell you. <laughs> and, and the one-on-one -on -one thing, nobody at my level will even talk to you, let alone <laughs> teach you anything, right? Then the other unique thing is that my success is tied to your success. Most people want 50 or 100 grand up front to teach you this stuff. Well, I turned that on its head 22 years ago and, and charge an entry fee and then a percentage of your profits that's capped so you're not stuck with me forever. So for me to make my 50 grand, you have to make 200 grand. Well, people love this. And like I said, 1,700 plus students later, it's still going strong after all these years. And as I promised you earlier, I told you, you get a scholarship to my school, which you can either use yourself for extra training or gift to someone. We had one guy spend $80,000 on his daughter's crappy education, and she's working a crappy job. And he gifted, he joined the mentor program, he gifted this, the uh, scholarship to her. After only four months, she's up to $6,000 a month as a side hustle. All right, I haven't talked to her for a month or two. She's probably more than that now. So this is very, very powerful. You can check it out at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. Give me a call. We can discuss your future online, either improving the business you have or starting you from scratch. Either way, I'll help you out with that. All right, let's get to the Facebook technique that got me invited to the White House. And then I'll throw in a little extra bonus technique for you, too. All right, here's the, here's the technique. Now, before I tell it to you, let me tell you how I used to teach this. It has to do with Facebook groups and how you can market to them without getting thrown out of the group. The old way was to join the group, lurk. It's called L-U-R-K, lurk for a while to get the nature of the group and what they talk about and so forth. You'd make good comments on posts and, and hope that someone would click on your profile to check you out and maybe buy your products or services. That was the old way, and it took forever, and you had to cross your fingers that it would work at all. Well, here's the new way. Uh, that it got, and it, number one, it got me invited to the White House. Number two, it got me a speaking engagement in front of my target market that I would never have gotten in any other way. And number three, it got people to join my mentor program. All right, now I'm going to back up just a little and tell you how to locate the groups that you want to approach. You simply put your topic in the search bar at Facebook and also related topics too, and you see what groups come up. Now, you may have to click on groups on the sidebar to only get groups showing up in the search results. So let's, let's use an example on, uh, with golf-related. Golf so when I say you, you have related topics, I mean, you can, you can type golf into the search bar, and then you'll come up with all these golf groups. And there's hundreds of thousands of people in these groups, I might add. So you basically you put golf in the search bar, filter it by groups only, and you see all the groups that are there. But when I say related topics, I also searched for Callaway, which is a fancy golf club. And I found another 711 members in a group on who love Callaway golf clubs, all right? And then I found another 9,000 people in groups when typing ping. P-I-N-G, which is another fancy golf club. And listen to this. I found another 175,000 people in Titleist groups. Now, do you see where this is going? There are tons of people out there to show, like if you had a golf gadget and you wanted to show it to all these people, in Facebook groups. But you just can't jump in the groups and start promoting. They'll kick you out. 
So how do you get in front of them? Well, you approach one or more of the admins of these groups to interview them on your podcast. When the podcast comes out, guess where they're going to post a link to it? Yep, that's right, in their group. And now you have a warm introduction to you and to your gadget from the leader of a Facebook group. Now, when people from the group listen to the podcast, they will hear your sponsor message about your gadget. And maybe, if it's appropriate, you may even be discussing your gadget with the leader of the group. All right. So here's here's how this worked for me. My school, which you heard about in my first sponsor message, has a scholarship for military spouses through the Department of Defense. I wanted to get in front of military people so they could hear about this. So I interviewed the admin of a veterans group. We had a great interview and we hit it off, and he invited me to put some of my training in the group. There's 14,000 members in this group, okay? Now, one of the people in the group was not only a veteran, but a military spouse of the year at one of the forts. I interviewed her, and we hit it off, and she had connections to the second lady's office at the White House. See, Mrs. Pence's platform was military spouse employment. Then, the admin I interviewed had an event at the Military Influencers Conference in Washington, D.C. When he found out I was a speaker, he invited me to speak at the event. All of this occurred in about a month after my first interview with him. This is really powerful, folks, this idea. So go back and listen to this if you have to, again, to get it right. But if you have a podcast, you can be in front of literally hundreds of thousands of people with warm introductions. Now, here's your bonus technique along the same line. Instead of a complete interview with the admin, that's always better because you can make a deeper connection with them. You put a widget on your website called SpeakPipe, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E, SpeakPipe. This lets people click on it and leave you an audio message. Now, in this case, you ask the admin to give you a tip on the topic of your podcast, and then you edit it in to the appropriate podcast. For example, I was doing a business insurance episode of Screw the Commute. Now, I have my opinions and my own stories about business insurance, but I'm certainly no expert in insurance. So, I got admins of two separate major big insurance groups to record three minutes. I think that's what SpeakPipes allows in the the free version. I I can't remember. There's about three minutes of tips on business insurance, and I edited those tips into my podcast, and then they put the episode in their group. (laughs) It's the same idea, just an abbreviated method. All right. To recap, we talked about getting podcast booking agencies to work for you for free, how to reach people you probably couldn't reach, and how to uh, market powerfully through Facebook groups. Now, if you want help on this and hundreds more online marketing techniques, check out my mentor program at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. And remember, it'll also get you a scholarship to my school. And I'll catch you on the next episode, which is 383, where Angela Olfest tells you how you can make a full-time living from home just using your voice. All right, we'll catch you on that episode. See you later.